The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 5th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a rally going, at least a rally attempt. You've got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside and all the sectors with inside the S&P doing the same. The Dow's up 98 points, S&P 28, NASDAQ 118, Russell's up 7, Semi's up 47, Tranny's up 111, New York Stock Exchange's up 102, Gold's up 10 bucks, Silver's up 26 cents, Light Speed Crude is up a buck 65, Natural Gas off 7 cents, 30-year Treasury, print out 122.24. If we take a look at what's going on, leaders in the clubhouse, you've got Mercado Libre up nearly 30 bucks, 2%, Cura Sushi up 15 bucks, NVIDIA up 13, Constellation brands up 10 and cost goes up nine to the downside it's humana off about 12 bucks two and seven tenths percent micro strategy 10 bucks one and a half percent united health nine one and seven tenths percent united rentals is off seven and uh saving royalty trust down nearly 10 percent six dollar and sixty cent move to the downside let's begin our day there you go let's begin our day with uh taking a look at the um Let's take a look at the equity futures daily, weekly, and so forth. So let's go move over to a different screen out here momentarily. We'll be there. And so you've got daily on the top and weekly on the bottom. So what do you know about the daily chart? We know on the daily chart out here, we know price in the ES Mini closed below the bottom of its profile. That tells us about a change in trend signal out there. I'd mentioned during the 11 o'clock update, if we do get a close above yesterday's high, that high out there at 47.66.50 would add to the idea of a two-day rally. We still may get it, but that just simply would really add to the idea of a two-day rally and suggest we may have this little short-term change in trend. I do believe it's short-term. It doesn't have to be short-term, and the reason it doesn't have to be short-term is because the weekly chart for the ES Mini formed a TD9 count top and price found support at that green oscillator and change line. Until it closes below that on an intermediate term basis, price this this really remains neutral. Yes, you've got a top. It's completed today, but with price above profile levels and with price above a green oscillator and change side, its overall signal is neutral. On the NQ, the NQ also like the ES Mini trading below profile support. That's up at 16839. Again, a close above yesterday's high would add to the idea of a two-day rally. When we take a look at the weekly chart. What held as support so far is the top of its profile, and that's up at that 16336 level. However, when we take a look at the oscillator and change line, the price holds that at week's end. And to do that, it would need to see a close above 16600 out there. Then its overall signal, even though it's got a TD9 count uh, top out there, it also would be neutral. 
because support will have held on the intermediate time frame. If you're trying to understand why did why is the market rallying from here? Well, because we come take a look at those other time frames and see support, especially for the instrument that was the weakest out here this week, and that was the NQ. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future Contract Tech, this is still just consolidated with inside its daily profile. It does have a daily roads momentum indicator top. In order to change trend, it hasn't even done that yet. Price would have to close below 37.607. We look at the weekly chart. Now, the weekly chart completes its TD9 count pattern this week. The cool thing about that is this week is the high of the session. So we made a new all-time high this week, just like we did in Great British Pounds. We take a look at other currencies. So 38,113. If price were to close above that this week, I'm assuming it doesn't rally to that level today, it could. But if price closes above that next week out there, that tells you about a strong upward momentum move for the for the Dow. Is that a possibility? It absolutely is. I had made mention to you about the Dow forming a new all-time high inside of euros this week out there. We have got, this is a very international rally. You've got the global flow of capital coming to the U.S. And if that's the case, if that's, and that's where we're at when take a look at even the, just the S&P 500, which is more of a U.S.-based centric index out there um, versus, versus just the large caps out here. Um, Anyway, something to think about. But in the case of the Dow, uh, the only way we would make the call, you and I would make that call, the price going to go target 36, 638 or so, is a close below 37, 607. So not until we get a close below that does that weekly oscillator and change line in the Dow Equity Future contract really come into play. We take a look at the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 also trading below. Our profile levels out there, it closed above yesterday's high, yesterday's high for the uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract, 1991, even Stephen out there. So watch that close. On a weekly time frame, I don't have any kind of a topping signal. Uh, we do have price that is back below its breakout level of 2015-80. Jeez, if it closed back above that, that would suggest rally on out here. So no topping pattern inside the uh, Russell for its uh, weekly time frame. But if price were to further, further pull back, its price target would be that 1909 level out there. Now, we also know, we took a look at this yesterday, the NQ, the ES, we've had now five consecutive days to the downside. Typically, in bullish markets, we only get to four. This is a signal to Steve. This should be a signal to you that we likely have a change in trend out there. But a change in trend can still lead to a couple-day rally, two- or three-day rally out there. So we'll keep our eye, again, on that spot volatility index. And the spot volatility index, the level that we're watching there right now, the 50-day is printing out at 1387. The spot fix at 1331. I'm not showing that to you on the screen here, but giving that data to you so that you can make note of it and uh, focus on it. And hopefully that assists you with regard to trading. Now, let's go take a look at what's going on from an intraday standpoint. An intraday standpoint with regard to the ES Mini as an example. The one thing that we can notice here, but these bars don't close until later. Now, this is a five-hour bar we're looking at, and that's 2 p.m. But price is above its oscillator and change line. This adds to the idea that we at least have a short-term change in trend. Now, I don't know where it's going to close at 2 p.m., but if it is above this 47.44 level, odds favor move up towards 47.89. You've got resistance at 40, you got sellers at 47.72 to 47.86 to 47.89. That is likely where price would run into resistance. Now, that's on the five hour time frame. On the four hour time frame, we've got the same uh, condition, that same condition with price now trading above that oscillator and change line. So, the level to watch here is the top of its profile, and that's at 47.60.05. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. You don't have to worry about the 05. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look. So the reason I believe that this is likely just a uh, one or two day rally out there, it's just a counter trend move. We've got change in trend uh, signals out here. One of the things, one of the things to add to that idea, happens to be the semiconductor charts out here. Now, if we take a look at the daily time frame, it's really clear. It's now clear to Stevie that there is an island top out here, and an island top. Uh, really at an all-time high. That's about as bearish as you can possibly get. Doesn't mean it can't get taken out, but that is a very bearish signal. That island top happens to confirm a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal as well. Now, just like this is signaling to you and I that uh, we could or should prepare, even the weekly chart, I wish David was alive, because he and I would have this conversation out here. So if we take a look at the gap from the week of uh, December 22nd, there was a gap to the upside versus the following week out there. And then this week, we had a gap to the downside. So the only hesitation I'm possibly calling that an island uh, top out there is the mere fact that the week of December 15th, that high got up to 41.6192, and the low was 41.55 for the week of December 29th. So, you know, if we go back to that candle, then maybe it's really not the island top. Now, David would sit here and he would he would argue that it is. So I'm going to go with that. I know what he would say. I know our conversations that we have or had, obviously. And uh, so but at least but regardless of what the evidence on the weekly, the weekly has got a confirmed TD9 counter roads momentum indicator top. So you got both those tops. You got this daily. Now, the reason why it would appear, at least as of 1119 in the morning, that we would get a two day rally is really coming from the semis. Now, the semis are the only index I'm aware of right now could have changed in the last couple of minutes out here that is trading above yesterday's high now i don't know where it closes if it closes back below i would say that's a pretty bearish message out there yet if it does close above yesterday's high and yesterday's high write this down 39 47 27 the price closes above that. It truly adds the idea of at least a two-day rally. Now, it could be more than that, 
But uh, I would say at least a two-day rally out here. If we take a look at it, Stan steps out here. We'll see that it, too, like the NDX 100, five consecutive days to the downside out there. Typical rallies, even counter trend moves, would typically last two to three sessions out there. So, again, if we close above yesterday's high, it adds, it adds to that idea that we get that uh, two-day rally. And if we don't close above it, and we're going into a weekend, you know, the indice that could be giving us the biggest, now it's giving us the biggest top signal, but also the signal that we could or should have a two-day rally would falter, I would have to say hmm, something. No, where it would get really dangerous, in my opinion, and, and this could happen by day's end. I'm not suggesting that it's going to, but it could, and at least we know what to pay attention to, and that's on that weekly chart. So we talked about it's got a confirmed TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Whether it's an island top on the weekly or not doesn't matter because it is at all-time highs on the daily time frame. But what the weekly chart has also done, it's pulled back, and so far it's tested and rejected support, and that's that green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 39.28 and change. If price were to close below that, then that would tell Stevie the semis are getting ready to head to 36, 69, 39. Now, I think that's where they're going to head towards anyways. Now, the confirmation of that would require a weekly close below that green oscillator and change line. So, again, we've got to watch that for the day. I'd be watching both the high of yesterday and I'd be watching that weekly oscillator and change line for some kind of signal out there. And if you don't get either of those, you're kind of neutral out here. But knowing that we're leaning towards the bear side, specific, specifically inside the semis, which are having the great rally today. But, boy, we want to be careful of, uh, of those signals up here at these uh, highs. Uh, so that's what I see when I take a look at this. So let's do this. Let's go take a look at some requests that have come in. I think I can get off uh, any kind of soapbox, not that I'm really on a soapbox, but just really trying to describe for you what we're looking at. We took a look at the spot politics. I think you've got a pretty good feel for what the market is doing and why and what to look for, or at least I hope that you do. So now let's go back and take a look at some requests that have come in. There's a request from Sat P inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at Airbnb. Uh, Sat would like to purchase a few shares and looking for an entry point. Well, that entry point really came yesterday when it completed that TD9 count bottom out there. It actually was was the bar number nine so it was two days ago when that pattern formed you got that confirmation yesterday you're trading inside a new profile right now that new profile has support at 132.86 and resists up at 138.96 so what do you do out here let me look at a 30 minute time frame chart with you and on the 30 minute time frame chart we can see there was a td9 count bottom this formed at uh, 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. So just adding to the idea, you were looking for an entry price. We take a look at these tools that we have out here. Even when it was forming that TD9 count bottom, it was forming a Rhodes Mintum indicator. This is back on uh, November, uh, January the 3rd out there with that Rhodes Mintum indicator. So this is how you would go ahead and say on a daily time frame, I've got a top or bottom signal. In this case here, we're talking about a bottom signal. And then go to those intraday charts to look for some type of confirmation. So now you've got the confirmation that if, in fact, price closes above, this is area Airbnb, if it can close above 137.03, if it can do that with more than 242,000 shares, the last candle session had only 119,000 shares. If it can close above it with volume, we're going to get an A to B equals CD to the upside. Of course, if you get a close above it, it being 137.03, you can still get an A to B equals CD to the upside, even if it is without volume out there. So you're looking for the entry point. What we don't know out here, Sat, is whether or not the top of that profile and oscillator and change line is going to act as, re well, we know it's going to act as resistance. The question is, will it be able, to, will price be able, will buyers be able to take that out? And that's the thing we don't have an answer to. So so here's what I would say. You're looking to buy a few shares out here. From a daily standpoint, this is going to be day number two to the upside for, it looks like, consecutive closes higher for Airbnb. Um, we've seen three. We've seen a four. We've actually seen five out here. That's a positive sign to the upside. I'd wait for some kind of pullback at this stage. But in, instead, let these charts here assist you with that. Uh, I, I assume that you do some charting work as well. Learn these patterns out here. Easy to be able to learn this pattern and apply it manually to a daily time frame uh, chart out there. A little bit more difficult on the intraday uh, charts. I get that, but it's doable for sure. Um, so utilize these uh, tools out here to assist you with helping answer that question as well. So I do hope that helps you. I didn't give you the answer yet. I mean, the answer is, 
look at a retracement. And we don't have anything that suggests that that's a likely outcome as we speak right now. So, uh, uh, but but that's what you should be watching for when you take a look at Airbnb. The only reason to not have you go right now, we're in mid-stroke between support and resistance. So I don't know that the reward risk is uh, there. But you've got the bottom. So do, you know, add, take buy a few shares if, if you would like out there. Let's go take your second request out here. That was a take look at uh, the trade desk. TTD is the ticker symbol. Now, this one is going to be a little bit easier for me to provide you with an entry area. It could be right here, right now. Why? Because this is going to be a TD9 count bottom that confirms today. It will complete on Monday. So that means we're going to go take a look for intraday uh, signals out here to see if the TD9 count bottom is lining up with a intraday bottom signal as well and then where are resistance levels uh, for you to take a look at or where would you jettison the trade if price closed below something so you got a td9 count on the daily the weekly has made its way back to its bullish structured support zone the zone is between 6285 never got down there but the top of that zone is at 6809 that's what it hit earlier this morning so another area of support has held. And on the monthly chart, it's testing profile support, the top of that box. It's trading just below it, but we're so early in the month, that's a hard one to call. So we come back from this breakout there. Satvi, go through your intraday charts, see if you see anything. I'd suggest taking a look at the 65-minute chart out there. Steve Rose with TFN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back up, folks. We're taking a look at the trade desk here. This is for Sat P inside the Tiger's Den. We've identified that it's going to confirm a TD9 count bottom pattern today. It'll complete that pattern on Monday. We looked at the intraday charts out here. What we uh, see is we see a Rogeman to Indicator bottom pattern. This formed an, uh, at, let me give you the exact time, that that confirmed at 1140. This is a 65-minute time frame chart. That was at 1140 uh, yesterday. Today, that low of that pattern was tested and rejected. So that's a positive. So that's the pattern still remains in effect out here. What this also tells us, though, Sat, is you clearly can see where resistance is at. And that's the bottom of that profile, 70 bucks. No idea whether price will clear that level or not. But if you're looking to take an entry into it, I can see taking that entry now. You could consider closing that out or being a day early, maybe wait until Tuesday. And I'll still hang on to the trade out here. But if price did close below the low of 68.07, that 65-minute time frame chart would negate that signal. Uh, let's take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, see if there's anything here. We can see three different Rhodes Mentum indicator signals, uh, two that have been confirmed. The third one that was just really a test of uh, – so actually the, this third one here negated that bottoming pattern. So I, I wish I didn't tell you. I, I wish I didn't. I wish that's not what the message of the chart was. But you say so you've got kind of confusing messages. But to answer your question, looking to get a few shares out here. Uh, the t as far as the trade desk, you've got the daily signal to do just that. So I hope that helps you out, Sat, on both of those uh, ticker symbols. And thanks so much for taking time to write in. Doug and Steve wants to take a look at the SMH. Now, the SMHs have a total different makeup of instruments versus the uh, semiconductor index out there. I know people think they're one and the same. They're not one and the same out there. And here, what I can't share with you with regard to the SMHs is, is that it has an island top, whether it's for the daily time frame or for the weekly time frame. What I can share with you, though, is it does have a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. And today, there is a new profile, Duncan, that is trying to form above price. That is a bearish message. Now, we can see the SMHs are traded above yesterday's high. And if price closes above that, that signals at least a two-day or should be at least a two-day rally. The high in the SMHs from yesterday was up at the 166.65 level. So price could be rallying all the way up to that oscillator and change line and all the way up to the bottom of that profile, 172.92. If today the SMHs can close back above 168.07, the weekly TD9 count, the weekly wave 7 pattern that is out here, the weekly roads momentum indicator pattern that is out here uh, will have held support. And that would then put the weekly time frame chart on a neutral signal. So the weekly would be neutral if price closes back above 168 and change out there. And then that would be a close above yesterday's high. And that would suggest a further rally. And again, that further rally, then the next resistance level, other than just a simple two-day dance move out here, would be up at 172.92. So that's what I see and take a look at the SMHs. I don't know if there was anything else that you needed me to look at, uh, Steve-O. If we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, though, what we'll see out here is prices trade above profile. There's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. Uh, short of that, price might be targeting 170.23. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance level for the 30-minute time frame. So I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for as well. Let's go to our next question. Oh, we're going to have time for a lot of questions out there, folks. Uh, I thought I had a bunch, but I was actually doubled up on a couple things. So the next request out here is from Nancy. And Nancy wants to take a look at Microsoft. And Nancy says she needs price to get to 373. Well, Nance, let's uh, go ahead and open up the daily time frame. Then we'll go take a look at the intraday chart and see what we can see out here. But on a daily time frame, Microsoft has generated a new profile. Now, this new profile, um, interestingly enough, is bullish. And when I say it's bullish, what I mean by that is the bottom of the new profile is above the bottom of the prior profile. The top of the new profile is above the top of the prior profile. We have had Microsoft in a TD9 count Rhodesman indicator top that has been trading sideways. It has tried several times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different times over the last couple weeks to bust out support. And that was the support of both its breakout level at 367 and its bullish structured zone of its profile out there. So what do we have? You say you want to get to 373. 
Let's assume the markets are able to close above yesterday's high. I don't know. If, you know that's, that's the first assumption out there. If we get that, then odds favor you get a further rally. Microsoft has to get to 373 in order to get to yesterday's high. And if that's what you're looking for and it gets up there, I'd probably in this market here, I'd go ahead and close out that position, but you have to make that decision. What you need to know, though, is that you've got support at 367.81. Uh, both uh, buyers and sellers are sitting at that 373 even Steven number, and all sellers reside at 377.16. But it still is a bullish message from the profile system out there. Um, so it's not showing us that it's going to break down. Uh, I apologize, Nancy. I didn't really look in detail when your option trade expires or what have you. Uh, but you've got the data here on the daily time frame. I think that should assist you with regard to that trade. Now, we've had Microsoft close lower for three consecutive sessions out here. Let's pull this uh, dance step chart out. What do we have? So there's really nothing broken here inside of Microsoft, really just following along with what we looked at on the daily time frame with regard to profiles and so forth. So um, nothing broken, at least nothing broken just yet. Uh, last chart that we could look at for Nancy would be a uh, intraday chart. We'll go ahead and pull that over here as soon as Stevie can get rid of this one. And now on an intraday basis, what do we have? We've got, uh, well, I've got a 65 minute time frame chart. Let's see what this is actually doing out here. You've got uh, not much. Trading with inside a profile, resistance up here at 372.51. What's a 30 minute chart look like for Microsoft? See if we could find any pattern out here for that. TD9 count bottom. Uh, price above profile resistance. If it can remain above the profile resistance level, that's at 370.99. This should get to 372.48. So you'd really love to see a close above 372.48 to suggest to you that at least on the 30-minute time frame chart, you've got an intraday change in trend. But that gets you pretty close to your 373 number out there. Nance, that's the best I've got for you from Microsoft. Hope that that information assisted you. We've got Fletch inside the Tiger's Den. Want to take a look at ticker symbol NU out there. NU is uh, trading out right now at about $8.50. It's uh, This is new holdings out there. It is attempting to take out profile resistance. And a close above the top of that profile that is at 848 would accomplish that. Now, price is trading into a prior swing point. Well, there's two prior swing points that it's trading into. So the most recent one was from back on December 14th. The volume there was 26 million shares. Today's volume so far is 15 million. So it's moving up into that swing point with volume. That suggests a close above 848 should take you, Fletch, up to at least that high. That high, 868. There's a second swing point that it's trading into, and this is its all-time high swing point, I believe, and that's from the trading day of November 14th. And that swing point's low is at 8.59. Uh, yeah, 8, okay, 859. We haven't gotten up. No, we did get up to it. It's 8.59. We got up to that earlier today. That has volume of 41 million shares. Again, today, we're up with 15. We are moving into that swing point, Fletch. Mathematically speaking, if I just take the 15 million and multiply times three, that gets us to the uh, 45 million, at least I believe if my math is correct out there. And again, that's going into 41 million shares. So if this can close the day above 859, that's going to suggest that price will target that 830 level. That's new holdings. That's for Fletch inside the Tiger's Den. Only one request left. That's to take a look at the GDX for Hector and Patty. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Oh, we're going to take a look at oil futures for John inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to our next question. This is coming from Hector and Patty. They want to take a look at the GDX. So, so when we take a look at the GDX, Hector and Patty, here's what we know. We know we've got a confirmed road momentum indicator top. We also know that price is trading below support. We're looking at the daily time frame, and that support level is 3046. That's the bottom of its daily profile. So what do I think about today's activity, that move higher, that move lower? Really not much out here. Um, you know, you've kind of got, if we just take a look at the body of the candle, We've got two inside bars, uh, so to speak, out here. Uh, typically, inside bar sessions will tell you that um, that the uh, existing trend were, were to continue. But here's one thing that we do know. So we do know that the GDX found support so far at the bottom of its weekly, not the bottom of its weekly, at its weekly oscillator and change line. So you just have a good old-fashioned consolidation between about 27.84 up to 32.36 out here. The weekly chart looks pretty. The monthly chart looks pretty good. That was weekly we were just looking at. The monthly chart looks pretty good. In that prices trade above the top of that monthly profile. That number is 29.56 out there. So with regard to the daily, from a volume standpoint, you had that nice big volume day on December 13th. 44 million shares. You pulled back, you gapped down a few days ago with 33 million shares. Yesterday was 17 million shares. So far today, you're with 10 million shares. So a little bit volume, more volume than, than um, yesterday, but still within. So, you know, here's your real support area. These buyers from that trading day of December 13th out there, but that's from a low of uh, about 28.67 all the way up to a high of 30.70 out there. So the daily chart, um, you know, the. I, not really, so I've not seen a buy pattern, which I think is really the uh, question out there. That doesn't mean that it hasn't bottomed. I just don't have a, a the, the reason why I say it, it could have bottomed is simply because the weekly chart has held that key little support area. Now, what signals did I have on the weekly? Um, really nothing here on the weekly chart either. So I wish I could provide you with more information. Maybe the only information additional, we know that, uh, let me just switch uh, screens here. We'll go take those black background screens. I think what I can show you here are the uh, trends that gold is trading with inside of. So where did I put that? That is right here. Let me open up this uh, chart here. So we take a look at Goldilocks. Uh, Hector and Patty, you can you can obviously do this on your charting system as well out there. So here what you can see is that the GDX is why gold, the GDX could have bottomed. 
Uh, gold is holding profile support and trend line support. If those levels fail, which would really be, I would have to say at this stage here, what would be a true failure of the trend? I would say it would be below 2011 or so. That would be that bottom uh, trend line that we're taking a look at. But with regard to the, the top, we can see we're also trading inside a descending trend line as well. So you're trading inside a wedgie. Nobody likes a wedgie out there, but that's what you're trading within at this stage and until we get some kind of break one way or the other out there. Not really sure what the message is uh, to us. Uh, just uh, you got a, a rocky roads out there. So I hope that helps you all, help you all both uh, uh, Hector and Patty, and have a wonderful weekend. As always, thanks so much for your questions. Let's go back to those white background charts and get to our next request. That's from Snowball inside the Tiger's Den. Snowball wants to take a Kroger. KR is the ticker symbol out here. Let me just make sure that Stevie's on the right page. Yep, good. We got that going. So with regard to Kroger, what do we see out here? Well, the one thing we can see with Kroger is uh, it did have a Three River Evening Star. Was there an A to B equals CD pattern? And the answer is there was. So this has a confirmed sell the D point top. If you don't know what the A to B equals CD pattern looked like, we would start from that swing point low from November 17th all the way to the swing point high on December 4th. We would take that line and we would move it over to the next lowest low that takes place after that B point. And you can see this made the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. The reason why I say it's a confirmed sell the D point out there, Snowball, is because this is a three river evening star. It's a bearish reversal candle. Now, one might think that because Stevie just did that or said that, that he is believing that this says hey, you should short. Well, first of all, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it formed a top. And when anything forms a top, it basically says price gets to go back to support. We, we don't know is whether it's going to break support or not. In this case here, it has not broken support. In fact, it's tested and has rejected that green oscillator and change line. Combine that with the fact that Kroger has formed a new daily profile. It did that today. Actually, it did it yesterday. And that profile was above price. That's a bullish message. Price has tested and rejected that level. So the overall signal here, Snowball, for the daily time frame for Kroger is neutral. Still neutral. You have a top. Not until that top gets to top gets taken out. In order for the top to get taken out, you now need to see a close above the high from January 3rd, 46.99. If Kroger was able to do that, it negates that pattern signal. It gets back to its bullish ways. But we can also see that even if it does that, what it really needs to do is close above 47.12. 47.12 is the top of that weekly profile. Why did price run into resistance where it did? I'm going to have to come back and say that's because that's where the sellers were located when we took a look at the weekly time frame. A close above 47.12, you're looking at 48.90. Consolidation on the monthly time frame chart out there, so nothing really more to add. So neutral on the daily, uh, somewhat uh, consolidation pattern on the uh, weekly and the uh, monthly time frame. I hope that review helped you out, Snowball. Thanks so much for the request out there. John inside the Tigers then wants to take a look at light sweet crude. I think there was something that clicked across my window that said you just went short or went short a little while ago. Let's go take a look at light sweet crude and see what it's doing. So here with regard to a monthly time frame, we've got a good old-fashioned consolidation. That's your upper left-hand chart out there, a consolidation with inside its profile. It would need a close below that profile level. That's at 73.80, 71.80, I apologize, 71.80 is where a price would need to close below uh, to uh, suggest we get to lower price. That's on that time frame. The weekly time frame, what do we have out here? The weekly time frame is consolidating with inside its profile level out there. It closed this week above 72.66. That's where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value. Would add to the idea of at least a bounce or a further rally up towards 76.04. That's the weekly chart. How about the daily time frame chart? The daily time frame chart has a TD9 count top. It formed that TD9 count top on the trading day of December 26th, completed it on December 27th. Remember, when you get a top, what's that really entitle sellers to do? Go see if they can bust out support. Did Lightspeed Crude bust out support? The answer is no, it did not. That's where price found support, the bottom of its profile, 7014. We're trading inside that TD9 count out here. And I would say that if price today closes above 73.13, and we're at 73.73 right now, odds favor a run back up to that 75.43 level. That's its bearish structured sell zone on the daily time frame. Now, let's look for some signals on the intraday charts. Nice TD9 count bottom. That led to a rally. Uh, we don't have a TD9 count top. 
You got bar number nine that is trying to form right now, but that won't form unless you see a 30 minute close above 73.96. So this pattern is likely to go away. What other pattern can we find out here? On the on the 60 minute time frame chart, if you see a close above on a 60 minute basis, 74 even Steven, that's going to trigger an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. Support to the downside right now is at 73.28. Uh, support on the 30-minute uh, time frame chart is at 73.54 and 73.10 out there. Those are the shorter-term time frame charts that I've got. Not sure that the 240, the 5-hour, the 120 are going to give us any other signals out there. So, John C., I hope that helped out with regard to Stevie's review of Lightspeed Crude and those different time frame charts. We'll be right back. We're going to go take, oh, we're gonna have the, uh, take a look at ET, SOXS, Mosaic, and NIO, if we can get to all those in two and a half minutes. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Welcome back, folks. We're taking the charts here for energy transfer. Energy transfer uh, formed a new profile this morning. It's below price. Price has already tested the top of that profile. It's trading above its oscillator and change line. Uh, this is uh, bullish out here with regard to its daily time frame. It does have a prior TD9 count top and resistance level. That price has struggled that. That's a swing point from October 20th. Uh, that high out there is 14.15. You need a close above that to really get on your bullish uh, way out there. That was with about 10 million shares. You tested that yesterday with 14 million shares. Did we get back up there to test it today? We did. 
Volume today is 4 million shares. So 12 million basically versus, so you're coming to that swing point with volume. It's likely going to get back up there and test it. But if this did close below 1372, our outlook would change to be more bearish. You got a consolidation on the weekly between 1328 and 1409. The monthly chart looks bullish. Let's take a look at SOXS. This is for Tom. That was for uh, Sandy. Sandy, thanks for writing in. Much appreciated. Tom G wants to go short, which basically means he wants to buy the SOXS on Monday or Tuesday. His question is, will it get back to 670 or below that? And the answer is this should, if we get that two-day decline, two-day rally in the semis, support is at 632. That's the top of its daily profile. The area where a counter trend rally would end, if it's just a counter trend move to the downside, would be at 610 out there. So, yeah, that's a definite possibility, Tom G. Thanks for writing in. Yvonne wants to take a look at Mosaic. Mosaic is just consolidating on a daily basis with inside its profile levels. Your support area, Yvonne, 3566 and 3675 is resistance. Consolidation in the weekly. Price is below profile and it's also going to change on, on the monthly chart. Watch those support levels on the daily time frame at 36. 3566. Lastly, NIO, N I O, is the ticker symbol out here. This is also for Yvonne. Yvonne, um, this is trading below profile support. It has a TD9 count top. Odds favor this is making its way back to 746. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, price found support at the bottom of its profile and a rally. So that's a bearish signal. And that could suggest a pull back to 757 out there. That's what I see when I take a look at NIO. Folks, thanks so much for joining me this week. Uh, I think we're off to a pretty good start for 2024. Let's make next week even better out there. But the way to do that is have a fabulous weekend. Be safe, and I'll see you on a marvelous, magnificent Monday. Take care.